They're peeling back this layer and then now revealing. In Mexico, there's an ancient cooking tradition that goes back generations. Seems like something's about to happen. See, A recipe where the meat is cooked with patience and the utmost respect. Oh, what is that? It's so full of something. This looks awesome. Today, I'm on a mission to explore Mexico's famous barbacoa. From the farm. <laughs> Sorry, epic sneeze. To the table. Have you ever eaten testicles? Once, but so long ago, I do not have a fresh memory of what they taste like. You make some new memories right now. Along the way, I'll be unearthing some of this country's most unique food. It has all kinds of insane ingredients, but the one that stands out the most are the worms. And it all starts here, a two-hour drive from Mexico City. Hola. Hola, hola. <laughs> this is my first time being surrounded by so many lambs. And they also sneeze. It's really weird. Yeah, all I hear is a bunch of coughing around me. Meet Herman. He's a content creator and one half of the duo behind Monks of Munch. We're here because of you, man. This place is yours. Can you tell us more about it? What happens here at this compound? Here they have the whole process, since the bird of the ship to the sacrifice of the ship to the cooking and all the way down to the table where they take it to the restaurant in Mexico City. The restaurant we'll be going to later. That's your restaurant. It's it's nice, restaurant. It's like... And all of this is called barbacoa. Oh, yes. So, Oh God, one just sneezed on me. <laughs> Why did I choose to do this? What exactly is barbacoa? Barbacoa is an ancient cooking method that involves slow cooking a whole animal or several animals in an underground pit. It's been used way back since the Mayans where they used to... <laughs> Sorry, epic sneeze. Keep going. The Mayans. This goes all the way back to the Mayans where they used to cook it in pits with volcanic rocks that were super hot. I've seen underground cooking in other countries like Oman. We want this to be airtight, no air getting out. But I've never seen anything quite like this. The traditional way is with lamb, but there's many other proteins that people use like beef. So you think lamb is the best? As you can see, that's what he believes. They look super tasty. Not yet, but at some point. I'm sure when they stop sneezing and shitting on me. So is it all men in here? I see a lot of balls. The females are used for breeding only. Okay. Is he just, so it's all guys. Yeah. Instinto racional. Instinct. <laughs> what makes your barbacoa so much better than the rest? Yo lo que tenemos para que ese sabor se mantenga y no ocupamos ningún otro tipo de alimento. Moises insists that half the incredible lamb flavor starts with the lamb's diet. Wheat, barley, oats, rolled yellow corn, sorghum, and a variety of grasses. This area is the feeding area where they are getting ready to be sacrificed. So they'll be slaughtered soon. Yeah. That is why we are in an elevated platform, so they don't have humidity. They play some music for the lamb to be relaxed oh. and not be so scared at the moment of the sacrifice. We need to go on to the next stage, yes. and I think that starts with getting out of here before we get sneezed on anymore. Why lamb and not sheep? The main difference is the flavor and the texture. It needs to be at five months and 40 to 45 kilograms to be the perfect lamb. After being dispatched, they begin a process I've never seen before. An air hose is used to inflate the carcass before the skinning can begin. Aside from the blood and skin, every part of this lamb will be used in the dishes we're trying today. And I mean, oh gosh. everything. After the lamb hangs for an hour, it's ready to be portioned into nine distinct cuts. Así la voz. Vamos a sacar primero la espaldilla. En esta parte de aquí. Se respeta el filete. Sacamos los costillas al centro. Un costillar. Chef Moises inherited this barbacoa recipe from his father-in-law. How long have you been doing this? Es un trabajo de familia. It is a family job for himself. 35 years plus of experience doing barbacoa. He said that nowadays we have a lot of ways of cooking things and even better methods. But for him, it's about tradition and keeping it alive. Dos piernas, un espinazo, dos costillas, un cuello que está precioso y dos espaldillas. With the meat ready, it's time to put it in the pit. Fires are made using Encino oak wood that's been aged for five years. These 
these fires produce an incredible amount of heat as the wood logs reduce into embers. While the flames rage on, they prepare the McGay leaves. So I think they're cooking it for a couple of reasons. One is to make it soft and pliable, and two is maybe for hygiene reasons, maybe to disinfect it on the super hot corrugated steel. I'm not sure. The maguey is an ancient native plant in Mexico. Its utilities here are endless. It can be made into alcohol, used as food, or aid in the cooking process as we'll soon see. With the embers near ready, Moises prepares the first food that will descend into the fiery pit. It's called consume. consume. A large pot of water consisting of dried chilies, garbanzo beans, rice, onions, epazote, garlic, and water. The consomme settles on the bottom of the pit. It's covered with a wooden lattice, then maguey leaves. The meat is about to go in. You can feel the heat radiating from this pit. There we go. With the leaves, each part goes in. There's nine different parts. The consomme will both send steam up toward the meat while also receiving fatty drippings, creating a rich, flavorful broth. Nothing's been pre-seasoned. We have the broth, and then he's just tossed a little bit of salt on there, and then that's it. There's no complex flavor profile. There's no dry rub. There's no wet rub. It's just about using the right wood and really good quality meat. On the perimeter, layers of more maguey leaves, a lamb stomach stuffed with diced organs and spices. Then a clear bag made from the maguey leaf known as michiote. This michiote happens to be stuffed with lamb testicles. We'll get back to that later. Now, seal the pit with more maguey leaves and another lattice. Then more maguey leaves, tarps, and finally, good old fashioned dirt. If executed correctly, the protein and the heat should be isolated from the outside environment. Even the smoke is trapped inside. This sweltering cooking process isn't complete until 16 hours later. What helped you kind of develop the high standards you have today? The standards come from her family, that he was fortunate to have her in her life, mm -hmm. and now they continue with that tradition. She started when she was a little girl, and when they got married, he joined the family business. Okay, so if anyone is doing the quality testing here, it's you. See. Yeah. <laughs> While the barbacoa roasts heiress to this meat empire, Norma treats us to a unique dining experience that I cannot pass up. First, we will start with this pre-Hispanic meal. We have escamol, eggs of the ant. Eggs of the ant. Yes, sir. These are really big. Grande uh, huevos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> On the flat top, she adds butter, onions, episode and peppers. Then the good stuff, a mound of ant eggs. It's also known as the Mexican caviar. Wow, <laughs> I like that. This is a lot of eggs in one taco. <laughs> it's like a pound of eggs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mmm. It's like really good. Every day I tell myself I'm done with tacos, and then every day I find something like this that brings me back. You won't find this in the north or in the south, only in the center of the country. And we're in the center right now. We're in the center right now. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> He's really hamming it up. Buttery, naughty. It's almost like a cottage cheese, because mm -hmm. the eggs are kind of sticky, the flavors are brilliant, and just tons of butter. That's awesome. All right, let's wash it down with some of this. What's this? This is the first liquid that comes out of the plant. Magay? Magay. Really? You can drink magay? Yeah. Magay? Magay. Magay? Whoa. This plant is so versatile. It's naturally sweet. It's almost like lemonade, but without the citrus. Yeah. He's so happy that you had this experience today and that you found a wamiel. Yeah, this is so good. Ah, uh, salud, salud. <laughs> Finally. After 16 hours of roasting, it's time to meet our meat. The digging has begun. They're gonna unearth the barbacoa. Oh yes, look at the steam. It's really important to get all this dirt out of the way because soon we're gonna be opening the pit and then all that dirt could fall down into the food and touch the food and we don't want that. You can see they're repurposing these leaves. He's cleaning them off here and then he's putting it in the box. This box is where our meat is gonna go very soon. Oh my gosh. this looks awesome. So here's the head. He's putting some salt on there right away. That goes in the box. The smells here, guys, this is ridiculous. It's like fresh bread out the oven, except for it's fresh lamb. Bless it with some salt. Oh my gosh, this is wild. There's nine pieces for each lamb. Look at this part right here. And you can see the ribs poking through this meat. I bet you could just grab it with your hand. It's like melting right off. Whoa, dude, this meat looks so crazy. Pours off the extra juice. You can all pour that into my mouth. 
So he's showing me now the bone. The bone is coming out. It's so soft. It's so tender. He just pulls it out like it's nothing. Hits it with a little bit of salt. Gracias. Uh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's nothing like that. That is so good. So tender. Melt in your mouth. Juicy and delicious. <sighs> wow. This is the stomach full of intestine, but there's heart, there's lung, all the internal organs are in here. I mean, the stomach is the perfect cooking vessel and this is steamed up beautifully. Oh my God. Even the intestine is like the best intestine I've ever had. A little chewy and delicious, but even that's still pretty soft. So this is another stomach. This is a red stomach. It's prepared with red chilies. Cut it open. Oh. I would not lie to you. One of the coolest food experiences I've ever had. It's so delicious. Oh, more? Huh? Oh, please, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> wow, muy delicioso. Deli de it's really good. I was gonna speak okay. Spanish, but I can't. My brain is discombobulated. I'm so happy right now. So this is the feet. Mm. Full of delicious collagen. It's fatty, it's oily, he just spit mm. out all the bones. That's how you do it, like a boss. Like that's the hoof, that's everything. And it's so tender and soft that it just comes right off the bone. Can I keep this bone so I can remember this moment forever? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Gracias. The Miguelis are used to wrap and preserve the meat as it heads to its final destination, the restaurant. And that's where I'm headed next. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to El Hidalguense, renowned as one of the top spots for barbacoa in Mexico City. It's open only three days a week, and the meat is shipped freshly cooked each day. What you get depends on what you ask for. With several cuts to choose from, there's a wide range of flavor and textures to be experienced. We have a nice, beautiful bowl of broth right here. This is breakfast. This is breakfast in Mexico, yeah. Remember that consomme broth? It's also been cooked down, along with concentrated savory lamb drippings. First, we try without anything. Mmm, that's powerful. Now some limon. A little bit of onion. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Step number three. Oh, there's another step. Drunk salsa, matcha salsa, and green salsa. Drunk salsa. Now there's some spice. Every time, he's adding more layers to it. He's saying that the combination of the lime, onion, and the salsa makes it whole and explodes the flavors. Better than espresso. <laughs> <laughs> yes, consomme is fine. But really, what I want to do this morning is eat balls with you. <laughs> Remember this? Lamb testicle michiote. First, skin the testicle. Slice them up and combine them with lamb fat, onions, episote, and dried chilies. Mix and place inside these clear bags made organically from the skin of the Miguel leaves. After roasting for 16 hours with the rest of the lamb, it's ready to eat. Oh, ho, ho. Have you ever eaten testicles? Once, but so long ago, I do not have a fresh memory of what they taste like. We can make some new memories right now. Looks like a slice of sausage, but that's really the testicle. Let's try it out, cheers. Mm -hmm. It's very soft and tender. It tastes like meat that's been really finely minced or ground up, even though it's not that at all. It's just a sliced section of the testicle. It can almost be smeared like a pate. Exactly. It's muy bueno, muy bueno, muy bueno, muy bueno, muy bueno. I'm really impressed. That's some good balls. I gotta say, in every country I go to, usually this is more of a man's dish. I mean, I mean. In here, women, men, children, everybody eats balls. In Asia, where I'm from, they believe it gives you some health benefits or stamina. Are there any benefits here or it's just a good food? Hey. <laughs> So what is the most popular cut that people come here for? He's telling us that each piece has its uniqueness and the demand for them are equal. Everybody loves different parts of it and <laughs> they all ask for it in different ways. But what about the head? Because every lamb has four legs, yeah. but just one head. He said that the demand for the head is really high that people reserve their head with eight days before. Oh, is that right? Yeah. All right, today we're in luck. Have you ever had lamb head? This is my first time. It's gonna be great. I'm excited. Next, a cut worth fighting for, the lamb head sent straight from the oven to the table. Along with it, a collection of lamb cuts prepared by Chef Moises himself. Harman? Yes. Everything today has built up to this moment. This is a big portion, I've never seen it in this size. Oh my gosh, let me unveil it for you right now. You ready? Yes. Whoosh. Ah. That's incredible. Ay caramba. Ay caramba. <laughs> So this is, I don't know, 10 pounds of meat right here. It looks almost the same as when we first saw it when they were walking past us. Yeah. Pretty much the same. 
We're gonna build up to the head. I think we just had to go straight meat at first. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh dear lord. It's crazy to think that it's only made with salt. Right, there's no overabundance of seasonings. It's just like the natural flavors of the lamb. Sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might have certain flavor expectations with Mexican food, especially where I come from. There's like a lot of cumin and different spices that are used that become familiar, that get locked into our heads like that's Mexican food. Yeah. I think when you come here, either to this restaurant or this city, you have to drop your preconceived notions of what Mexican food is and just take it for what it is. It's gonna make the experience a lot more enjoyable. Absolutely. Oh man, it's very fatty, the meat. Yeah. And so to go with something that's fatty, it's tequila. Absolutely. Oh, it's 9.56? Hey, it's drinking time. Hey, yeah. Let's go. Cheers. A little bit of lime juice, sour. What's this one? Sangrita. Ah, it's sweet. Wow, I went through every emotion just now. <laughs> I think we should slam one of these inside of a taco. Like a good Mexican, you should never pick the tortilla on the top. Go for the middle, so okay, because they're right. warmer. Thank you for teaching me how to be Mexican. So I'm gonna slap on the meat, and we just have so much to choose from here. And then this. <laughs> it has all kinds of insane ingredients, but the one that stands out the most are the worms. On a flat top, green tomatoes, chilies, garlic, and onions are seared along with the worms. Those worms grow in the maguey plant, which wrap the barbacoa. So I love how much this plant has come interacting with everything we're cooking. When it's ready, hit it with the mortar and pestle until the content reduced down to a lumpy paste. Some say it's even better than guac. This is gonna be one of the most unique tacos I've ever had. I've never had salsa with worms in it before. Tons of delicious meat. Let's go Cheers. for it. Mm. 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 This is out there, man. It's so fresh, it's so spicy. The meat is so tender, it goes so well. And that nice big soft corn tortilla. I mean, sometimes the corn tortillas can be a little dry. Not these, no. super soft. And then this salsa, man, this is something else. It feels fresh, it feels natural, it's so good. But it's also wormy. Yeah. It's not bad, it's just kind of earthy. It gives it some cojones. Absolutely. Mm. Right here, we have a freaking head. This is a cheek. All this part is the cheek of the lamb. This is a gift for you. Thank you so much. That is like the best part. Oh, there's a little bit more cheek meat here. Oh, there we go. Wow, we revealed a beautiful smile. Look at that. I'm gonna give it a flip. Oh, yes. Lower jowl meat. Oh, this one's for you. This is probably one of the best bites on the whole lamb. Oh. This wow. is the best part. It Ooh. just falls apart completely in your mouth. Man, what a unique flavor, texture. It's fatty, it's protein, it's mushy, it's tender. I'm gonna go in, I don't know, if there's a tongue in here. Uh, oh, there's a lot of meat in here. It just falls apart. All right, roof of the mouth. Weird, it probably ate or breathed through that. And then the tongue has a bunch of stuff attached on the bottom. There's so much stuff. And then this is uh, potential dentures. The roof of the mouth is here. The tongue is here. I'm gonna give you the tongue and I'm gonna eat the roof. Okay, I'm taking off the outer layer and this inside part of the tongue is pure lean meat. It's delicious. I've got the roof. You've I got, got the, the tongue. tongue. Cheers. This is so strange. Usually I don't overthink the food because I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm eating the hard palate of a lamb. Of a lamb. Those lambs are sneezing all over me, you know what yeah. I mean? Just... But it's very tender. This part is super delicious. It is lean, it is tender, it is amazing. Try it. All right. That is my favorite part of the whole barbacoa. Mmm. It's lean, but it becomes super tender and soft. I think we've done it. This is incredible. Barbacoa. The restaurant experience is incredible, but there's no way to fully understand this dish unless you really see where it comes from. And you see the care and the time and the effort. It's very unique. You know, around the world, a lot of people cook food underground. I've had in India. It was amazing there. But each place does it a little bit differently. Mm, it's all right. Oh. Here, it's done so well in a way that's just so unique to Mexico. And I love that they're using every single part of the animal, from the roof of the mouth to uh, the bottom of its feet, like everything is utilized and everything's delicious. Without a bunch of heavy seasoning or crazy spices, just salt, good technique, and good ingredients. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. The goat is known for having pretty oblong testicles. You know, in Indonesia, they call the testicles of the goat torpedo. De carnero. Okay. Bueno, aquí la preparación. I thought that was an interesting fact. He did not care. Just a couple more questions. Barbacoa. Is it barbacoa? Yeah. Jesus, what's wrong with me? 
Sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very rich. What can really often cut through rigid? Well, sorry. The meat is very rich, and what often cuts through rigid? I quit. Guys, that is the end of this fun food video. I want to say a huge thank you to my man, Herman Monks of Munch. That's the channel. Find them on all social media, but especially YouTube. Go there right now, subscribe, follow their fun viral recipes. I've watched it, I like it, I want to eat the food. Did you bring any food to try? Yeah, I have some in my room. Ah, he's trying to lure me into his room. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. You guys say it? Yeah. Try it in? Yeah. Okay. All right. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>